Hey folks, this is Pat again from Rain Country Homestead. And Mama Rain and I and a good friend of ours went garage sailing today. And she bought these uh, new curtains for 10 bucks. She got to thinking, well, she wants to get rid of those ugly blinds that we have in the living room. So we don't have a curtain rod to go with these things. So she wanted me to figure out something instead of just staple them to the wall. I thought I would see if I can make a 11 foot dowel <laughs> and a curtain rod for the curtains to go. We have to make a big long rod of some sort to uh, fish in between these rings here. So I found a piece of material out in one of my hillbilly piles as she calls them and I think that will suffice for putting her a curtain rod up. So let's go take a look at that. So here we have a chunk left. You can see how badly weathered and checked this piece of wood is here. Had some deep checking in it. And so this piece here is about 3 inches by 3 inches. Just a 20 foot chunk of wood here. I cut this down and ran it through the table saw to take the warps out of it. Uh, and to true up the sides to make it square and ran it through ran it through the uh, the planer in order to get as most of the cracks out as I possibly could. Once I round the corners of this square piece, this is one and an eighth by one and an eighth, I will hopefully be able to make all that disappear. Well, it's mostly a, mostly a clear piece. Like I say there's some sun checking and weather checking in it but uh, once I round this down and put a dark finish on it I think that's going to blend in nicely with uh, what I have in there right now. Years ago I made a uh, we replaced the windows and I made frames for all of them. What I'm going to do is I'm going to round these corners off and basically make a dowel out of this um, after I'm finished. This is the largest bit that I have so I determined that I can I can cut that an inch and an eighth by inch and an eighth and then round the corners and it'll be almost perfectly round when I do that. Well I have to put a fence up because if I don't uh, the edge of the board is going to want to run along that bearing and cut a little uh, decorative notch in that piece right there. So with this particular little shaper you just run this knob if you loosen this up you run the knob up and down and that raises or lowers the elevation of the cutter head. Now what I like to do with the router when I when I install a router bit I like to raise it up just a little bit I don't like to put it all the way against the collet because um, if you know when these things get to running sometimes they'll get kind of stuck in here and a lot of times I'll, I'll just put a little bit of WD-40 or some sort of other little lubricant in there to help it to keep it from binding up but sometimes these bind up so that collet gets hung up in there and I'll take a little piece of wood or something like that and just tap tap the top of the uh, the, the cutter head and that allows me uh, the freedom to have that break loose instead of having that bit tied up against the collet to start with that won't get in a bind then see Okay, so when I'm raising and lower, lowering the, uh, the cutter head, I put a straight edge across here and make sure that it's, it is straight. It's not, you know, you can use a, you know, you can use a level or, or a piece of wood like this as long as it's perfectly square on the bottom. But I can raise and lower the cutter head to just miss the plane of that step. The sharp edge over here is just going to make that radius or make that cut along the edge of that board. If I raised it up higher it would make a decorative little relief in there and I don't want to do that for this particular application because I'm actually just trying to make uh, a somewhat of a dowel here. So I'll just make that disappear. Now you see where the the edge of the wood here 
is brushed up against the edge of the wood on both fences but it's holding it away from the bearing so it's stepping it away from the bearing that little step right there will step out and cut your wood if you're not careful so that's why I put the fence in here so I don't do that so anyway I'm gonna go ahead and give this a try got my knob secured down I'll go ahead and get this thing plugged into our solar something wrong with my shaper motor here so I'm gonna have to go with the uh, plan B on this and go with my old router table that I built a while back <laughs> Well, it's not perfectly round, but it'll, uh, I think it'll do just fine for the job. I'll go ahead and sand this down and uh, prepare it for staining. Okay, guys, next I'm over here on the wood lathe. Um, I have some dug fur chucked up in the lathe here, and I started turning it down. I thought I'd take a quick shot of this. Okay, we have the rods and ends, end caps cut out and sanded down. And now we're going to build four standoffs or supports for the rod and, and curtain. So what I have here is I have some uh, Douglas fir I have uh, whittled down from rough sawn. So I run it through the planer, run it through the sander sanded it with the palm sander and can cut it down to um, I think a shape that's going to work out pretty good for the application so here's an end of the rod uh, you know just the end piece from the the rod that I had built and that's going to go in there somewhere and I need to have some sort of a flare come out here and a flare come out here so I can put a fastener into the wall and be able to counter countersink in into the sheetrock and into hopefully a stud. Uh, might miss some studs so what I'll do is I also have some wall mollies that I can use uh, for support on this so I'll have one a screw here Then I'll also put a screw on this side and the hole will be recessed to accommodate the screw that supports in and there so there'll be two per hanger or support and then what I'll do is I'll put a inch and a quarter hole in here to accommodate the wooden rod that's going to run through each one of these four support pieces here I'll cut out the first one I'll clean it up and use it as a template for the rest of them
Now I'm determining where I want the hole to be, the inch and a quarter hole to be, an inch and an eighth all the way around here. So an inch and an eighth on several different points I measured and came up with this area right here. So what I'll do is I'll set up the, the bit in the drill press and then I'll run the I'll run the bit down to where it's just in the center and then I'll run this up against the bottom face of this uh, hanger here and I'll clamp this in place I'll clamp the back in place and then I'll put another little stop right here okay so now I have a reference and a place where I know that is going to be every single time I put the press down so here we go Okay guys, I'm back over here at the router table and of course we've got our holes cut. We got this uh, edge smoothed out and so I want to round off the edges just a little bit here uh, just to take the edge off it to make it a little more finished. Um, I installed a, um, a little bit here that will just round the corner kind of like the larger bit did for the, uh, the curtain rod. I'm going to put just a real light curvature on the supports here or the brackets and so that I don't want it to cut in too awful deep here because I still have to make some mounting holes to go in here and so here we go we're going to go ahead and round the corners just on the the outside not the inside because we want this part here to go flat against the wall take this extension and a countersink bit and go to the front side and I'm going to countersink a little hole in in the uh, front of the hanger that way when the screw goes in I'll be able to take these little dowel plugs and plug the hole and it'll look like a dowel that's been put into the wall. I have to have the extension on there so I can bypass this with the the chuck and everything and that way I can get straight down on top of the uh, the hole with with the drill press. Hey guys, now I'm here in the little room here. I used to put a finish on some, uh, some of my stuff. And I'm going to put a stain on this to match the interior of the house. And this is just simply uh, early American Minwax uh, stain. Penetrates, stains, and seals, it says. And I'll make sure I mix it up good. Put this on with a rag or a brush. Sometimes it's a little faster putting it on with a rag. Definitely faster when you're putting a, when you're staining a dowel. You just wipe off the excess stain so it's not blotchy. 
Okay, here are all the parts with the stain on them. Okay guys, we're here at the home stretch of the project and so what I'm going to do is um, install these just above the frame of the window. I'll mark this with a nail. All I need is uh, some two inch drywall screws. Just your standard drywall screw. Number two Phillips head on it. Put the bottom one in. So now I'll just square the window frame and the support. Okay, that's solid there. Now I got three more to do just like that. Okay, I have everything in place. I have the caps on, they just push on. And in order to keep this from sliding backwards and forwards, I just put this little pin in here. I call it a pin, but it's actually just a nail. Just drilled into the support here, or the standoff, and the curtain rod. And have this little finishing nail pressed into the top so it can't slide back and forth. So it won't go anywhere. And I got the same done to the other, other end. Now all we have to do is put the curtains up. Well, Mr. Rain got the curtain rod put up and we put the curtains on and I'm really liking the way it looks. And we got the string lights. The string lights used to go just right here because we had the blinds on here and so I had them right going across here but obviously with the curtain rod up higher and the curtains covering it we need the lights more at night when the curtains are shut. So we hung them up there. Mr. Rain put some hooks along the up there and then uh, yeah so I think it looks really nice and it looks much cleaner okay well I know we got some backlighting going on here but you can kinda see at least how the view looks it's much cleaner and nicer without those blinds and I get a view of the neighbors lovely rhododendrons over there and I just I'm really happy with it so anyway thank you Mr. Rain for another wonderful honeydew project completed and thank you all for watching take care and god bless